Good morning, everyone. Uh, Humaira Falkenberg here. Um, today is really a very special day. It's the first inaugural Jedi training, justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion training on snow in North America. I am a immigrant to United States. I come from Northern Pakistan. Um, my passion is skiing and snowboarding, mountaineering, spending time in the great outdoors. Um, and my life's work is justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion training. Um, and these are just attributes about myself. They um, are characteristics. They don't define who I am, but they could inform others to learn more about me. Um, really deep and in my heart center is cultivating inclusion so that everyone has a connection to the outdoors. And that our relationship with the outdoors is simply another advancement in the civil rights. It's a human right. Thank you. And that's my first ride up the chairlift with Humaira <laughs> Falkenberg. Hi! Oh, we, we both are a little bit giddy in getting to know one another. Oh, I love it. Thank you, Deb. Oftentimes, we talk about equality and we talk about equity, right? What is the difference between equality and equity? So all of you have skis that are matched for you, correct? I'm going to have you switch spots. You switch spots. Now try to get into the other person's skis. Yeah, not happening. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Close, but not, not working. Can get in? Is it working? But wait! But you all have a pair of skis. Nope. <laughs> it's just it's it's just an exercise for you to experience. Oftentimes in our industry, we're told, well, you can everybody can go skiing. You just get a lift ticket and you get clothing and you get gear and you just go. And it's really without giving consideration to the individual and what obstacles or what differences that individual may have. Yeah? Yeah? So equality is giving everyone a shoe and equity is giving everyone a shoe that fits. You do an, you do an exercise with your training. What do you call it? The circle of power? What is circle it? of power or wheel of power or wheel of privilege. Why, why is that relevant? So that is relevant because it's based on the great work of Kimberly Crenshaw. She's a professor of law at UCLA and Columbia University. And she talks about intersectionalities of various identities. And so for me, just identities, it doesn't define who I am, but it, it informs my life experience. So for me, my Im identities are immigration status. I was not born in this country. Language, English is not my first language. Gender, I identify as female. I'm a woman of color, but I'm also not black and I'm also not indigenous. So I have proximity to whiteness that others who may be black or indigenous do not have. And I'm mindful of that. I'm mindful of my education. I'm mindful of my socioeconomic background. And those are all identities, right? And so in the wheel of power and the wheel of privilege, at the concentric portion of the circle, who would be at the center? White, male, hetero, socioeconomic background, English as a first language, right? Education. Education. 
able bodied. That's right. Right? And ableism isn't simply being able to use four limbs. Ableism is also mental health, neurodiversity. It's also uh, how one has emotional intelligence, right? Being on the spectrum. And those are not visible aspects of ableism, but they exist, right? Another key component of being in the center of the wheel of power, wheel of privilege, is one's identity associated with holding that power exclusively for oneself or one's group only. And then being blind and not knowing what's on the outside of that wheel of power. What might you expect the response to be from the general public about this content? Mixed. Some people may be um, not really understand that there is a, a wheel of power, wheel of privilege, um, but that's okay. And others uh, will be heart-centered on that and like, wow, people are talking about it. And there'll be some that are in between and it's okay, and it's okay. We're all on a path of evolution. Let's ski. Got it. You know, you look different than me. Is yeah. your experience different than mine? Um, I would say yes. Um, and I'm not just a woman of color. I'm also an immigrant. So I also have an accent. Um, English is not my first language. Um, and oftentimes, you know, Deb, my experience at a ski area, at a bottom of a chairlift, maybe someone trying to be friendly, and they may ask me <clears throat> where I'm from. And that is a deeply troublesome question for someone like me. Why? Um, so I'm left in a position to guess the intent of the question. So oftentimes if I will respond by, oh, I'm from Washington State, the follow-up question is, where are you really from? And then I have to do this really awkward dance that the individual is entitled to know my country of origin or my childhood experience and background. And that's deeply personal. And no one is entitled to that information absent really knowing me. This is, this is really complex because when I get on the chairlift with, with white people, let's say, I ask them where they're from. Yeah, and so there's an art of conversation in asking where an individual is currently living. And that's considerably different than asking where you're from. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. And so, you know, you can use that art of conversation, micro questions to get at perhaps your curiosity. But again, remember, you aren't entitled to know that deep personal information just the same way I'm not entitled to know how much income you make on an annual basis. That's how personal that question is. Really? So... I mean, they can see you and know you're different. And so we assume, where are you from? Um, we can't, when, when I approach somebody, uh, I don't say, how much money do you make? No, you don't. You don't. And you know, you Maybe have Maybe if ethic. I saw them with a fur coat, if I saw them with a fur coat, my question might want to be, how much money do you make? <laughs> and how inappropriate that would be too. It would be inappropriate. I would make an assumption because they're wearing a fur coat. Yeah. So how much money do you make? Yeah, not okay. I'm going to do that next time. <laughs> Wouldn't that be so good? <laughs> I'm so going to do that. And I want to I wanna take a video of their response. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't do it, Deb. Don't oh, do it. Wait, would, I, would I be opening up a can of worms? Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, then we don't open up a can of worms when we ask you that question. Uh, why, how come? Are, do, are we just numb to it? I think it, there's just a general sense of not knowing, right? And there's no shame in that. There's no shame in that. Yeah, this is pretty. Take the middle right down the gut. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it yeah.
love it here. It's so beautiful.